Today, we're talking about CNC machining versus 3D printing. CNC machining is a subtractive manufacturing technology. Unlike 3D printing, the process typically begins with a solid block of material or a blank. Parts of this material or blank are then removed to achieve the required final shape using a variety of sharp rotating tools or cutters. 3D printing or additive manufacturing builds parts by adding material one layer at a time. 3D printing processes require no special tooling or fixtures, so initial setup costs are kept to a minimum. When choosing between CNC machining and 3D printing, there are a few simple guidelines that can help and be applied to the decision-making process. As a rule of thumb, all parts that can be manufactured with limited effort through a subtractive process should generally be CNC machined. It usually only makes sense to use 3D printing in the following cases. When traditional methods are not able to produce the parts, for example, complex or topology-optimized geometries. When a fast turnaround is critical, for example, 3D printing can be delivered within 24 hours. When low cost is essential for low volumes, 3D printing can be more competitive than CNC. When there is a small number of identical parts, typically less than 10. When materials are required that can't be easily CNC machined, like metal super alloys or flexible TPU. CNC offers greater dimensional accuracy and produces parts with better mechanical properties in all three dimensions. But this usually comes at a greater cost, especially when volumes are small. If higher part quantities are needed, hundreds or more, then CNC or 3D printing might start to lose their competitive advantage compared to mass production technologies such as injection molding. However, it all depends on how well the design is optimized for economies of scale. Now, let's talk about the differences in process characteristics for both technologies, starting with dimensional accuracy. CNC machining offers tight tolerances and great repeatability. Very small to large parts can be CNC machined very accurately because of the shape of the cutting tool internal corners will always have a radius. However, external surfaces can have sharp edges. Different 3D printing systems offer different dimensional accuracy. Industrial machines can produce parts with very good tolerances. If tight clearances are required, then critical dimensions can be 3D printed undersized or oversized and then CNC machined during post-processing. Since parts are fabricated one layer at a time, layer lines might be visible especially at curved surfaces. The maximum part size is relatively small because 3D printing typically requires close environmental control. Moving on to materials. CNC is mainly used for machining metals and plastics. It can also be used for machining other materials like woods, modeling foams, and machining wax for certain niche applications. Good to know, CNC machining materials have great mechanical and thermal properties with a mostly isotropic behavior. However, all materials have some level of residual internal stress which can cause warpage, usually with very complex or thin features. This should be taken into account at the design stage. Dimensional restrictions due to blank size can pose a problem. Using a non-standard blank size will increase the cost. 3D printing is predominantly used with plastics and to a lesser extent for metals. Some technologies can produce parts from ceramics, sand, wax and composites. Good to know, for 3D printing there are a wide variety of materials and a wide range of physical properties. Materials that are difficult to machine, such as TPU and metal super alloys, can be 3D printed. You may have lesser mechanical properties compared to CNC parts. They are typically not fully isotropic. Next, let's discuss model complexity. When it comes to CNC machining, there are a number of limitations that should be considered when designing parts. Think of tool access and clearances, hold and mount points, as well as the inability to machine square corners due to tool geometry. Some geometries are impossible to machine as the tool cannot access all the surfaces of a component. Most geometries require the rotation of the part to access all the sides. Every unique positioning is called a setup. However, having multiple setups adds to the processing and labor time. Plus, custom jigs and fixtures may be required. 3D printing, in comparison, has relatively few geometry restrictions compared to CNC. Mostly for powder and resin-based processes, not so much for FDM. The ability to produce highly complex geometries is actually one of the key strengths of 3D printing. Support structures are required in most technologies and are removed during post-processing. Plastic freeform organic geometries can be easily manufactured with SLS or MJF. 
as they require no support. Post-processing. A number of post-processing techniques can be applied to both CNC and 3D printing to improve the functionality and aesthetics of the as-built components. Apart from the as-machined class of finishes, where the machining marks are left as is, the most common post-processing techniques for CNC machining are bead blasting and anodizing, typically type 2 or 3. For 3D printing, it's media blasting, sanding and polishing, and metal plating. Finally, manufacturing workflow. Here's what happens behind the scenes when placing a 3D printing or CNC order. In CNC, a programming engineer will first draft a production plan by simulating the programming of a part. They will choose the machine, tools, setups, raw material size, as well as machining parameters that are optimal for the desired tolerances and roughness. The production plan is then passed on to the floor shop where the raw material is set up in the machine for machining. After machining, the parts are then sent for post-processing, if applicable. In 3D printing, the machining operator first prepares the digital file, then sends it off to the machine, where it is printed with little human intervention. When printing is complete, the part needs to be cleaned and post-processed, which is the most labor-intensive aspect of the 3D printing manufacturing workflow. Let's finish this video with some rules of thumb. CNC machining is best suited for medium to high quantities, less than 250 to 500 parts, and relatively simple geometries. 3D printing is generally best for low quantities, or one-off prototypes, and complex geometries. When considering metals, CNC can be price competitive even for low quantities, but geometry limitations still apply. When quantities are high, CNC can remain cost competitive, but the design must absolutely be optimized for production in order to get the economies of scale. If the design is really mature, in some cases further cost improvements can be made by switching to a casting technology. Although, there are a lot of design limitations and the startup costs are very high. That's it for this video on CNC machining versus 3D printing. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.